Thank you, Alex, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe, and I'm also from Waymo. So Chen just gave a really great talk. And I think after her talk, a lot of you would like to take a closer look at what Waymo is doing, or even get your hands on some real world Waymo data. So here's a great opportunity for you to learn more on how to be involved. In the next session, we will introduce Waymo Open Dataset and our latest work, and how you may be able to use it for your research. So in this session, we'll first give an overview of the datasets and benchmarks. Then we will introduce what is the latest for 2023. This includes two new exciting announcements. This will be the very first time that we announce this publicly. After that, we will dive into the 2023 challenges. This includes four challenges across a variety of tasks. Uh, our team will introduce these in more depth and we will have the winner team from each of the challenge to share, your, to share their methods with you. We have a very talented team be, behind this effort. Here are the core engineering and research contributors who bring the data set to you. And we have so many more contributors from other teams at Waymo who could not fit on the slide, but also made essential contributions. It is needless to say how important data sets are, are for machine learning. And for the Waymo Open Dataset, our mission is to contribute to the research community with one of the largest and most diverse autonomous driving datasets. We're excited to say that with the work from the last four years, we're closer than ever to fulfilling this mission. And here's why. Waymo Open Dataset was first launched in 2019. And throughout the last four years, we have continued to expand on the dataset with new features and challenges to make it one of the most uh, one of the largest data sets and most comprehensive benchmark sets. Currently, the open data set is composed of two main sets, the perception data set and the motion data set. The perception data set is focused on computer vision tasks, including detection, tracking, segmentation, and post estimation. The motion data set enables tasks like motion forecasting, planning, and sim agents. Both of these contain data collected from Waymo vehicles in real life scenarios from multiple cities across different times of day. They're rich in diversity and interesting events and equipped with high quality labels. So let's take a closer look at what features are included in each of these data sets. For the perception data set, the foundation is high resolution sensor data from five LIDARs and five cameras. You can see on the illustration on the right. On top of that, we have multiple types of high quality human labeled and human QA labels. This includes bonding boxes, both for 2D and 3D, uh, 2D and 3D key points, 3D semantic segmentation, and 2D video panoptic segmentation. We also have 2D to 3D correspondence. And this year, we have added 3D road graph, uh, which connects the perception data set and motion data set in terms of road graph, road graph representation. Uh, we have also introduced two new formats this year, which my teammates will tell you more about. By building this comprehensive set of labels, we aim to support various perception tasks and make it useful for your research and your topic of interest. We believe that these diverse set of labels on the shared sensor data will spark more opportunities for research with multiple types of signals and build more accurate and robust perception system going forward. The motion data set, on the other hand, aims to support tasks on motion forecasting, planning, and simulated agents. It has over 570 hours of data from over 100,000 scenes. Um, this year, we have lad added LiDAR data to all of the scenes, making it the largest data set for motion prediction with sensor data. Uh, all of these data are collected from real world driving from six cities, uh, San Francisco, Phoenix, Mountain View, Los Angeles, Detroit, and Seattle, with a wide variety of scenarios and road user behaviors. Since the release of the motion data set two years ago, we have seen the research community build many amazing state-of-the-art models with it on collection of topics. So we would look forward to what you would build with it. And with these two data sets as foundation, we have built one of the most comprehensive benchmark sets to our knowledge. This includes 17 benchmarks across the stack. For perception, our vanilla flavor benchmarks on detection tracking are one of the most popular benchmarks to autonomous driving. And we added new tasks like real-time detection, camera-only 3D detection, segmentation, and post estimation to address some of the most important tasks to autonomous driving. 
And based on the motion data set, we currently have four benchmarks. The motion prediction challenge has been really popular, so we run it three years in a row. In each year, we make updates to the challenge, either with an improved metric or something new to the data. And uh, my teammate will tell you more about the 2023 version. Also based on the motion data set, we have interaction prediction benchmark um, and uh, occupancy and flow prediction, which are to address some of the very popular research topics. This year, we introduced the same agents challenge, which is the very first benchmark on simulated agents for autonomous driving to our knowledge. The next slide highlights the challenges that we held this year. Three out of the four are brand new benchmarks that we created in 2023. And my colleagues will share more uh, about them in a few minutes. Although each of these benchmarks started as a challenge for a period with prizes, the leaderboards have remained open and will continue to serve this, uh, to serve this research community. Um, so if you haven't yet, we highly encourage you to check out our data sets, check out our benchmarks, and submit to them anytime. We're always looking to expand the Memo Open data set to contribute to more topics for autonomous driving research. In the following section, Xinchen, Alex, and I will walk through the newest releases in 2023. So this includes five things highlighted in the yellow bubbles here. The first feature is maps for the perception data set, which is a popular feature by user feedback. This includes 3D road graphs that has the same set of uh, features as the motion data set, including lanes, crosswalks, signals, uh, driveways, and road edges. With this feature, we hope to enable more research on applications that include maps, such as road graph reconstruction or end-to-end -end learning with maps. The second feature I wanted to introduce is LiDAR data for the motion data set. We see a lot of potential in using sensor data to build more capable and accurate behavior models. So our team worked to bring you the largest data set on motion forecasting with LiDAR data. What we did here is to add corresponding LiDAR data for every single scene in 100,000 scenes in the motion data set. It has 100 times more LiDAR data compared to the perception data set, and it is the largest to our knowledge. To make it easy to work with for the users, we compressed it by eight times using data encoding which was last year's uh, CVPR work by Waymo. So we're excited to see what you could build with such large amount of LiDAR data for motion forecasting and end-to-end -end learning or for other aspects of your research. Like mentioned earlier, we're always looking to make the open data set useful for your topic of interest. So here comes two new announcements for what we will be releasing later this year. I'm thrilled to announce our upcoming major software release, Waymax. So planning and sim agents research has become increasingly popular. To advance research in this field, we organized a sim agents challenge in the last few months and received many exceptional submissions. Building upon this momentum, we have been working to bring you Waymax, a lightweight research simulator to further enhance research on the training and evaluation of the agents. Waymax offers a range of features and capabilities that will enhance your research. First of all, it is very lightweight, it will enable researchers to conduct the experiments efficiently and iterate quickly. It is hardware accelerated, making use of the in-graph compilation to deliver blazing fast simulations. It is multi-agent, so you could analyze intricate behaviors among multiple road users and unlock new insights into multi-agent systems. It's based on the Waymo open motion data set with real-world driving data from multiple cities. And it's written entirely in JAX, so it's compatible with a wide range of machine learning frameworks. We believe that Waymax will be a valuable tool for the research community. We're working to externally release this software simulator in Q4 of this year, and we can't wait to see what you will accomplish with it. So next up, I will turn it over to Xinchen to introduce another upcoming dataset release. Uh, hello everyone, this is Xinchen. So I'm a research scientist at Waymo. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the perception object asset, which we plan to include in the next uh, uh, open data set release. So as you see on the slide, so perception object assets is basically uh, the objects we extracted from the open data set, including the camera images and LiDAR point cloud. In particular, we provide accurate registration of camera rays and uh, LiDAR point clouds to the object, object century frame. 
So this way, I mean, we hope that uh, the release will uh, will be able to support like a, a NERF and the generative AI research in this area. To, to our best knowledge, knowledge, this is the largest and the most diverse uh, uh, objects data set uh, in the world, in the, especially for the a AV space. So if you are interested in learning more about the details, uh, come to my talk tomorrow at the VACD workshop, as well as the poster session on Tuesday. So here's a preview of the uh, vehicle bench, bench uh, vehicle object bench we we uh, pl we plan to release. Here's another view of the perception object as as we plan to release. Yeah, you can see like in the dense urban areas, a lot lot of interesting thing happening. Yeah. So next, I will hand it over to Alex, who will be talking. Uh, more about the updates, especially the modular data the modular data format. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alexander Gorban. Uh, I'm research scientist at Waymo. I work on data set infrastructure and human pose estimation. Uh, you've seen from previous slide, we evolved the data set quite a bit uh, and plan to do so in the future. So it's really important to release the data set in a human friendly format, which enables all those future releases. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about the data set format. Uh, we'll have some fun, hopefully, if uh, Zoom allows us to do that. And uh, I'll present results for the uh, human pose estimation challenge. So the data set format, if you ever use data set, uh, Waymo open data set, you probably notice it it's, it costs a lot of disk space and takes a lot of time to download. And you're not necessarily using all the features in this data set. You may be interested in only one feature, but you still have to download the entire thing. So it's because the V1 format that we used to use, it's a single uh, opaque uh, data format uh, called TF records. So TF records designed to store opaque binary blobs uh, uh, as a sequence, and uh, it's pretty difficult to access individual fees, fields from this uh, format. So releasing new features required to regenerate the entire thing. Uh, if you want to use a new feature, you have to re-download the entire thing. So we, this year, we're releasing a new format. So this new format is based on the Apache Parquet file format. The key difference here is that the data set is no longer a single uh, large unit of data. Instead, it's made up of small components. Uh, each component is a set of fields which you have to use together, like the components is camera image, components is a LiDAR data, human key points is another component. Uh, so if you interested only one of them or two or three, you download just them and sometimes they're very small. So uh, you, you've just heard about the object asset uh, data set. It will be released in this new format. And uh, a nice feature about this format, it's 40% less than the original format, even if you don't load the entire of it. Uh, and it's using uh, Apache Pi Arrow data types. So it's proto free. If you're not a big fan of protocol buffers, feel free to not use them with this format. So uh, just a quick taste of this format, just to give you an idea how it looks like. Uh, it, you can read it using Pandas, Dask, or Pyro, or any other data science tool. Most of them support Apache Parquet. Uh, and when you read it, it's just a single table uh, for, for each component with plain uh, Pandas type or Pyro types. Uh, we provide a set of APIs to quickly join those uh, components, individual components in the single data set. Uh, it's called V2 Merge. And uh, you can, we also provide object-oriented API for you to uh, easily access individual fields from this data set. So that was a quick taste for a full meal uh, of new features, convenient features that we release. Please see the, the tutorial, give it a try and uh, let, let us know how you feel about this. So uh, the quick and fun experiment that I promised, hopefully everything works, uh, let's see. You can use your phone or computer to access. Oh, I see people start to thumbs up. That's great. Uh, you can also use a physical thumbs up uh, if you prefer. I'll see how many people 
oh, that's that's really nice. <laughs> uh, technology is working. That's that's amazing. Uh, let's see if when it start to slow down a little bit, I, I assume everybody was able to access. So the most important question is how do you feel? Uh, and uh, I, I assume that you can uh, describe your feeling in a single word, or maybe three of them. And we hopefully will see some uh, emotional cloud of our today session. Uh, tired, yes. Uh, amazing, good. Happy, awesome. Wow, you're a positive crowd. I would never tell by looking at you. Tired, tired. Okay, okay. That's more like true emotion at this time of the day. Uh, let's give it maybe 15 more seconds and uh, move to the next question. We have five questions in total. They're not as difficult as this one. Okay. Yeah, I think it's converged both tired and happy and it's good i agree okay the next question uh i want to pull your opinion on is do you like polls and this is a pretty serious question uh and apparently you can answer this by using emojis oh <laughs> yeah i'm not sure if it's crying out of love or sadness Crab. Feel like crab, yeah. <laughs> uh, converging? Yeah, I think we, we're almost done with this question. Yeah, I think that's it. So the crab is the winner, obviously. <laughs> okay, the, the slightly more relevant question. Uh, how are you familiar with the way more open data set? Okay, we should we should have an answer. I'm from Waymo. Never heard of it. A little. Okay. Uh, I hope we'll we'll use more. Those who use the little. Uh, never heard of it. Okay. The, the mission accomplished for our session. So the the next question is. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and resources to. Uh, provide any feature so it's really useful to see uh and you know uh we are happy to see when the features we release are useful uh but it's also important to see that some features are not that useful and people are not using them so it's also important signal for us okay bonnie boxes I'm really curious to learn what others are using. Fifty-one, fifty-two. We'll wait until everybody responds, like all eighty-two of them. Perception. Okay, so you 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 notice the uh, there are a lot of types of uh, data. Uh, we the data set way more open data set is different data sets and challenges. So the the next question, yeah, I think we're done with this. Raise your hand if you want to vote and didn't have a chance. No, okay. The, the the question is uh, which challenge you are excited about. We're about to hear about different challenges and uh, we need to, to understand how popular they are because it's not always, you may be excited about challenge but didn't have a chance to participate. Uh, I see, okay, okay. Yeah, don't get me wrong, we are not going to change the ranking uh, of winners 
order of the slides, it's just for the future. Motion prediction. And I really like to see the past challenges because uh, we have a lot of them and we keep running the evaluation board. So it's not, it doesn't mean that the challenge is not popular if we are not running it this year. So please participate. And if we see enough interest, we'll uh, run it again. Yeah, I think it's pretty much converged. Okay, great. Uh, so then that was it. Uh, I'll try to switch to back to the main presentation now. Okay, on a more serious note, we're always interested to, to hear your feedback. There's uh, quite more uh, questions we want to get answers. So please fill this survey if you use or not use the data set, if you participated or not participating in challenges. And now we're gonna uh, switch to the challenge uh, announcements. So uh, this year, uh, uh, we had four challenges. Uh, I've seen they're quite popular from recent polls. Uh, pose estimation, motion prediction, C-Magins, and pan video panoptic segmentation. And uh, I'm going to present... Oh, we... Sorry. The results from those uh, challenges uh, are all on the website. We were very excited to see uh, quality and quantity of submissions. So we... We are thrilled to share the results with you so everybody can learn from, from those challenges. So please see those websites. And the post estimation challenge. Uh, uh, I was uh, owner of this challenge this year. It's a quite unique challenge for, for an, a number of reasons. And the goal is to detect pedestrians and detect localized 3D human key points for this challenge uh, within 25 meters from the autonomous driving vehicle. We provide high quality 2D and 3D labels, uh, quite, a, quite a few, uh, like, uh, oh, sorry. So we provide high quality 3D label and uh, evaluation server to evaluate uh, all the metrics. And uh, this type of challenge uh, accept all kinds of uh, models, fully supervised, semi-supervised, or weekly supervised. And we also offered a new pose estimation metric to, to evaluate uh, fair, fairly all the participants. So uh, speaking about uh, uniqueness of this data set, one of the unique features of this, this uh, challenge is the data that we provide and uh, its quantity. So we share uh, 170,000 uh, object frames for, with 2D key points on images labeled by various operators and aggregated together. We also share uh, independently labeled 3D key points. Uh, quite, uh, the, the number is different. Uh, it's because we want to encourage people to use more 2D key points and uh, come up with ideas for semi or weekly supervised training. So here's the numbers. Uh, and here's kind of, I, I, I tried to came up with a uh, way to give you a feel of the distribution of the data, and that was one of it. So this is these are 3D poses uh, that we share. Uh, they all aligned for visualization purposes. Uh, obviously, they all rotated. They are not flat. That's a projection of 3D key points. And you can see from the slides that there are missing key points uh, on some of the poses. It's because operators were not able to label them. And if operator is not able to key point, we assume that uh, a method will also uh, provide an indication that this key point is not available, missing or occluded. Uh, so each key point was labeled by a number of operators. We aggregated them together, uh, removed outliers. Then we had a quality control process in place to make sure that all errors are within acceptable threshold. So it's quite clean data uh, for 3D key points. Uh, and it's also data from real life, uh, from, uh, from real streets. It's not synthetic, not the usual data set for 3D key points estimation in a lab with eight subjects. There are thousands of subjects and uh, in the very, in varying, uh, environment in varying uh, conditions with lots of occlusions, realistic seclusion, uh, you can get a feel from this slide. And uh, since it's a new challenge, uh, quite a new formulation where you have to detect uh, both key points and objects, uh, we came up with a new metric which uh, 
allows us to measure quality of uh, key point prediction. And also it's a, it also accounts for uh, detection quality problem when it, you are using subpar detector. So in a nutshell, it's a weighted sum of uh, square error uh, of key point localization and uh, a fixed penalty of 25 centimeters for unmatched key points. What's unmatched or matched key points is that we expect people to share uh, their bunny boxes with key points with us. And we do, do the matching on our side to maximize the metric. So if you didn't match a key point, you'll incur a fixed penalty. Uh, why it's interesting and useful metric? Uh, it's very interpretable. It's error in meters. Uh, in the end, you understand how your method perform. Overall, uh, you'll get a realistic uh, estimate of its quality in meters. It's also sensitive to localization and not so sensitive to the overlap of bounty boxes. You will not be able to game the metric by slightly tweaking uh, bounty boxes that you use. Uh, please go uh, and see the detailed description in the metric. Uh, we also, uh, we also uh, have a large set of uh, other evaluation metrics for key point evaluation server, uh, which includes most of the used metrics and they provide a full comprehensive picture of the performance of the metric. Uh, so the, the, the winners of the channel challenge, so or not winners in our case, unfortunately we, uh, we got two submissions and both of them were disqualified for different reasons so we cannot share a prize uh, but one of the submission uh, we were very impressed by the quality of the method uh, so it's kind of honorable mention and we would like to share their presentation with you hello everyone this is Yufei thank Wimo for inviting us to present our work at this workshop this presentation I will introduce our solution to the post estimation challenge, LP former, LiDAR post estimation transformer with multi-task network. Before we dive in, I would like to introduce our amazing team members, Dong Qiangzi, Yu Fei, Wei Jia, and Zi Xiang. Thank Professor Farouj for the suggestions and support. Our LP former achieved state-of-the-art performance by accurately predicting 3D key points from only LiDAR point clouds without relying on camera features or 2D weak supervision. And the main novelty of our LP former is that it utilizes a transformer-based second stage that leverages various features extracted from a multitask network, LiDAR Multinet. Here's an overview of our two-stage method. The first stage is LiDAR Multinet. The second stage is a key point transformer. The first stage takes raw point cloud as input. It consists of a 3D encoder-decoder structure with a global complex pooling module in between. The bounding boxes are obtained through the 3D detection head attached to the dense 2D BV feature map. For the point call inside each bounding box, we gather their 3D sparse feature from the decoder using their corresponding voxelization index to get the right point voxel features. Within each detected bounding box, the point calls transformed into local coordinates are concatenated with their point features like intensity, timestamp, etc., resulting in the pink point features. Furthermore, similar to center point, for each bounding box, we adopt the BEV feature at its center and the center of the edges in the 2D BEV feature map as gray box features. The key point features are generated from learnable embedding features. Here's a diagram of how we process each bounding box in the key point transformer. We start by compressing the dimension of the box features. Then these compressed box features are repeated and concatenated with the point features and point voxel features. Next, a sequence of key point transformer operations are performed on the key point queries 
and this fills the pawn tokens. Finally, the key pawn queries are passed through three distinct MLPs to learn the X, Y offsets, Z offsets, and the visibility of the 3D key point. Simultaneously, the point tokens are processed by an MLP to learn the point-wide segmentation labels for the 3D key points, which serve as an auxiliary task. The segmentation auxiliary task labels are generated by assigning the label of each key point to its top k nearest point. Here's the leaderboard for this post-estimation challenge. Our method LP former reached the top performance. This table compares our method with other SOTA methods. Our method outperforms all previous methods with a 6.16 cm MPJPE without using camera image or 2D supervision. And we didn't use the ground truth bounding box during inference. This table shows the ablation studies of each component contributing to the performance of our final result. Here's a demo video of our prediction results for a portion of a sequence from the validation set, which shows a scene of many pedestrians crossing the street. Okay, that's the end of our presentation. Hope our work can provide inspiration to those who are interested in this task. Thank you for listening, and more information can be found in our report. Uh, thanks, Yufei, for the wonderful presentation. Quite exciting new method for the post estimation. Hi, everyone. My name is Kan Chen. I'm a research scientist from Waymo. And here we come to the motion prediction section. The motion prediction task is quite simple and classical. Given the agent tracks for the past one second with all available features, let's predict the positions of up to eight agents for eight seconds into the future. However, things are a little bit different this year. We have been running the motion prediction tracks three years straight because of, because of its popularity. And this year, we have two important new feature updates. The first one is that we release the LiDAR data. Compared to the Waymo Open dataset, the Waymo Open Motion dataset contains 100x number of LiDAR segments. The compressed uh, version of the LiDAR uh, reaches 2.3 terabytes. And the second feature is that we release the mapping features with the lens, signs, crosswalks, uh, road edges, etc. We would like to highlight these two important features because they enable the new possibilities towards the end-to-end -end driving model which means we directly feed the row sensors to the model and let the model to predict the agent future trajectories. With the WOMD LiDAR data set, we can go beyond perception boxes to directly leveraging rich LiDAR sensor observations. We also provide the first trial of the motion prediction model integrated with LiDAR inputs on the WOMD data set. We selected one of the state-of-the-art LiDAR detector called the SW former to extract the LiDAR embedding and feed it to the waveformer of one of the state-of-the-art motion prediction model. And we show that on the WOMD data set, we bring the performance increase. We hope the release of the two important features will boost the research of the end-to-end -end motion prediction task. In terms of the motion prediction trajectories, uh, in, in terms of the motion prediction metrics, we consider several of them. The first one is the mean ADE, which means the minimum average distance error compared to the ground truth. And second one is the mean FDE, which means the minimum final distance error compared to the ground truth. And the third one is the soft mean average precision, which is soft MAP. The soft MAP metric differs from the MAP metric only in the way that it handles multiple matching predictions for a given trajectory. In both cases, only the highest confidence matching prediction is counted as a true positive. In the standard MAP metric, additional matching predictions count as false positives, but in the soft MAP case, additional matching predictions are ignored and are not penalized as part of the metric computation. For the 2023 motion prediction challenges, soft MAP is a metric used to rank the leaderboard. And here comes to the most exciting part. Let's announce the winners of the motion prediction track in 2023. The third place, the method name is called the GTR R36 with soft MAP at 0 
The second place, the method name is called IAR IAR plus with soft MAP as 0 0.4480. And the champion team, the method is called MTR plus plus ensemble with soft MAP as 0 0.4738. Congratulations to all of the winners. Let's welcome the champion team to present their method. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the invitation from the organize, uh, organizer of the Vimo uh, Open Dataset team. So uh, I'm Shao Shui Shi from uh, Max Planck Institute for Informatics. Uh, today, I'm very, very happy to have this opportunity to share our first place solution for the motion prediction challenge. And so in th this is a joint work with Dr. Li Jiang uh, and Dr. Deng Xindai and Professor Bernard Chile. And uh, in this talk, I will first briefly review uh, our previous MTR framework, and then I will introduce our latest MTR++. Uh, so to address the motion prediction challenge, a uh, uh, popular strategy is to utilize the densely sampled goal candidates to localize the potential destination of our interested agents. Uh, but the, the methods with such strategies uh, generally will suffer from high computational and memory cost due to the requirement of the densely sampled goal candidates. So um, to address this problem, a uh, natural question is how to reduce the number of the goal candidates. Uh, our idea is to learn the experience knowledge from the uh, massive ground truth trajectories of the training data. Uh, to be specific, we, will, uh, we first utilize the k-means clustering algorithm to uh, on, on the endpoints of this uh, the, of these training trajectories to generate a small number of intention points, which can cover uh, diverse future behaviors of our interested agents. Uh, because the number of the intention points is very small, so uh, well, uh, each, in each intention points needs to cover a large destination area. So uh, to enable this, we uh, propose to encode each intention point as learnable intention query. And these intention queries are considered as a query input of the transformer decoder to aggregate effective features from the same context. And the output features of each intention query will be utilized to predict a single future trajectory towards its corresponding intention point. So based on such design, actually in, uh, in our uh, MTR framework, uh, each intention query takes charge of predicting, uh, pre uh, takes charge of predicting a future trajectory of a specific intention mode, like uh, different, uh, different moving directions or different velocities. And so such motion decoding actually uh, depends on the effective feature encoding of the scene context. So here we follow the uh, vector representation to represent everything as a polylens. And in our previous uh, MTR framework, uh, both the polylen feature encoding and the, uh, poly the polylens relationship encoding are based on a unified global coordinate system uh, centered at the focal agent uh, that is the interested agent. So the problem is that uh, such learned token features actually are customized for the focal agent. So if we use the learned token features for predicting the motion of other agents, uh, then the performance will decrease a lot. So uh, to address such problem, we propose a symmetric scene context encoding strategy uh, to encode the tokens, to encode the polylens relationship without depending on a global coordinate system. So uh, to be specific, first we will encode the feature of each polyline in their local coordinate system. And then the, the question is how to also learn the tokens relationship without depending on a global coordinate system. Uh, so to, to adjust this problem, we propose a quite, uh, simple and effective query-centric self-attention. Uh, so in, in this query-centric self-attention, we propose to consider each token as a query separately to aggregate features from other tokens in the query tokens local coordinate system. So based on such design, actually the tokens relationship are encoded symmetrically for each token uh, without depending on a global coordinate system. So based on such query-centric self-attention, actually the learned token features can be utilized to predict the motion of any agents within the scene. So, uh, so in our MTR++ framework, we actually adopt multiple sets of intention queries uh, based on the same encoded token features to simultaneously predict the motion for multiple agents. Uh, and so from the, the experiment shows that our query-centric self-attention actually can 
achieve comparable performance with previous uh, uh, previous uh, native self attention. But the latency of the context encoding is greatly reduced, especially for the scene with a large number of interested agents for predicting their future trajectories. So uh, after this, we further consider how to further improve the performance of our MTR framework. Uh, our key motivation is that if one agent can, uh, can know the uh, potential future behaviors of other agents, then the model can predict better, uh, more accurate and, uh, and seeing complaint future trajectories for multiple agents. So based on such motivation, we, we propose to propagate the information propagate the information among the different set of intention queries of multiple uh, agents. So because the intention query actually in our MTR framework, the intention query contains the inf information of the potential future behaviors of uh, each agent. Uh, but now the problem is because the intention queries is defined for each agent in their local coordinate system. We want to maintain this property during the relationship encoding of the intention queries. So here, actually, we can reuse or propose the query-centric self-attention to learn the tokens relationship in their local coordinate system instead of a global coordinate system. So after such uh, design, actually, we can see that in the final framework, before feeding the intention queries to the transform decoder, we first adopt the mutually guided intention query module to let each agent to be aware of the potential motion of other agents uh, then we will uh, uh, propagate. We, we, we will then we will feed these intention queries to the transform decoder for predicting the motion of other uh, of each agent. And the experiments we can show that after uh, adopting this, such mutually guided in, intention query module, uh, the mean AP is greatly uh, improved. And finally, our method achieved the first place in this year's motion prediction challenge. And so. Uh, uh, that, that's all of uh, my presentation, and uh, the formal paper of our MTR++ will be public available recently. So uh, for more details, please stay, stay tuned for this website. Uh, thank you for your listening. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Xiang Shuai, for the amazing work on the motion prediction challenge. Um, so uh, everyone, I'm Nico Montali, uh, and I'm going to be presenting you a brand new challenge based on the Waymo Open data set called the CIM agent challenge. Um, so since this is a kind of new topic, I wanted to start by defining what are CIM agents uh, and why do we need them? So when we are uh, developing a, uh, an AD stack like the Waymo driver, um, given the high cost of um, testing in the real world, uh, we usually resort to testing uh, the car in simulation. Um, so this is a, Obviously, because this is more scalable, we can just uh, use computing instead of uh, putting a human driver behind the wheel. Um, these are some problems, obviously, because if you start from the log data, the stuff that you've seen in the real world, um, and the AD stack does some different action in simulation, that perception uh, of the other objects, dynamic objects, will get stale. So the, the behavior that we will get will not be realistic. So for example, uh, slowing down could cause a tailgating event uh, which is not what we expected to see. Um, to fix this issue, we have simulated agents. So simulated agents are um, logic policies, programs uh, that take control of those dynamic objects and react to the um, actions of the um, AV stack uh, in order for the simulation to be realistic as a, as a whole. Um, this is done in closed loop um, for multiple reasons. So first of all, if you look at the first uh, plot on the right, uh, this is the setting we use in the real world simulation. So um, the car acts in the real world and we get uh, sensor data back uh, based on what happened in the real world. Uh, when we substitute this in simulation, uh, we need to have this interactive loop. Um, and uh, because obviously the simulator doesn't know what the AV stack is going to do and the um, AV stack doesn't know what the simulator is going to do. So it's kind of like a two-player game. Uh, and we had a great talk uh, before from uh, Andreas talking about why open loop is different from closed loop. So I guess like somebody made the point for me before. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is that um, depending on how your AV stack is factored, um, um, factorized, uh, we can actually have different interfaces. So for example, for Waymo, um, we have this two tier, let's say, 
uh, perception and planner, right? Um, and in particular, we can act on just one of the, of the loop, um, like the what we're doing for Seam Agent with planner, um, because that makes the problem like well factored um, and less complex, let's say, because if you're doing end-to-end -end simulation, obviously you're gonna have uncertainty from the uh, uh, central noise, but also from the um, behavior, uncertainty of behavior that you don't have. Um, just to mention also what Zoe was saying before, this sort of um, interface with, uh, with Planner is what uh, Waymax uh, was designed to do, obviously in closed loop, so uh, Waymax will really help uh, develop solutions for the Sim Agent challenge. Um, so the challenge itself, uh, it's very similar on the premises on the motion prediction challenge. So you start from uh, one second of history and map. Uh, but what we require users to do is to simulate uh, 32 realistic joint uh, futures. Um, and this, of course, is much a bigger task than motion prediction. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's been an interesting experience. Um, it is. Kind of uh, a complex setting, so I um, shared the white paper that we put out on archive there. Uh, it has all the details. Um, just to instead, like um, the objective of a SIM agent uh, is obviously quite clear because we want to reduce the SIM to real gap um, so that the learnings that we have in simulations are mapped to the real world. Uh, but uh, measuring this gap is actually a quite complex task. Uh, and our solution is distributional behavioral metrics. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into that. So first of all, distributional, because we know that the word is multimodal. So it means that for the same initial condition, multiple things can happen. Uh, and SIM agents need to have this specific requirement uh, for two reasons. So first of all, they need to respond to different action of the, of the AV, as we can see on the uh, three plots that we have on the, on the right. Uh, so the, the AV is doing something different, so the SIM agent will need to do something different, um, but also to challenge the AV in different ways, so we can properly test it, even if we uh, are doing things that didn't happen in the real world. Um, so we frame the problem of um, evaluating SIM agents by distribution matching. So we want to have the same distribution in simulation from what, the one that we've seen in the real in the real world. Um, the second question is what distribution? Um, so this is the behavioral part of uh, what I was talking before. Um, so we've seen for the motion prediction challenge, most of the metrics are based on uh, trajectory in X, Y, X, Y space like AD. Um, what we are proposing instead is behavioral metrics. So uh, numbers that really um, measure some um, observable um, behavior characteristic. Uh, we divide these metrics into three macro categories. So kinematics, how you move, uh, map adherence, do you go out of the road, uh, interaction, do you collide with stuff, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, look at the white paper, everything explained really well. Um, and all of these are then aggregated into the, um, a composite metric, which is hopefully uh, getting all the signal for all of these. Um, and this is what we use to score the submission for the challenge itself. Uh, we're going to play the video for the first entrance uh, while we recover the leaderboard. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yu Wang from Pexas. Today, I will be presenting our first place solution for the Wimbo Open Sim Agents Challenge. I'm very excited to share our solution called the Multiverse Transformer with you today. I find the Multiverse concept a poetic analogy for traffic agent simulations. That's why I came up with the name Multiverse Transformer. Each decision a driver makes at every fleeting moment spawns a multitude of parallel universes. Our multiverse simulator generates a multitude of parallel universes. Each one mirrors the locked real-world driving data, yet diverges subtly in its own unique way. Here's an overview of my presentation, now let's dive in. In this challenge, the simulator is supposed to simulate the states of the agents at 0.1 second intervals for the upcoming 80 time steps. The simulator must be closed loop and run in an auto-regressive manner. The agents at the ADV must be conditionally independent so the ADV component can be replaced with any arbitrary policy or planner. The traffic agent simulation is closely related to the motion prediction problem, which was agent-centric and auto-regressive approach. Our simulator is learning-based generative model and our simulator is also closed loop. Our work is inspired by the traffic scene, which is the Similar work for traffic agents simulation. 
and uh, our work is based on the motion transformer, which is the state of the art prediction model. Our proposed MVTA utilizes encoder decoder transformer network and implements an auto regressive rollout for closed loop simulation. The same context include the agents ADV and the map. They are processed by the transformer scene encoder to produce enhanced scene context features, which are used by subsequent decoder layers. Each decoder layer produces multimodal predictions, which are sampled to simulate the upcoming point one second. The ADV policy operates concurrently and can be swapped with any new release of policy or planner. Our training is performed end-to-end -end in a closed-loop manner with loss calculated at each time step. We randomly pick a point on each ground truth trajectory to separate it into history and future components instead of using a fixed history. This way, more training samples can be produced. The training losses include the negative log likelihood loss as well as two L1 losses for velocity and the heading regressions. At each decoder layer, the prediction horizon is one second, however, only the waypoint of the initial point one second is utilized, and the rest of the prediction is discarded. The benefits include promoting multimodal diversity, reducing compounding error during autoregressive execution, and uh, also it means more flexibility in the inference setup. Uh, to promote multimodal diversity, we adopted the top case sampling. However, the top case sampling is susceptible to compounding error and could generate trajectories with unrealistic kinematic motions or even drift. So to strike a balance between realism and the diversity, we only apply the top case sampling at a periodic intervals. We use variable length history and we aggregate the past trajectory over time. We aim to align with the training, which also uses variable length history. Additionally, longer history enhances the stability of the simulation by reducing the potential for compounding error. Here is an example showcasing the autoregressive rollout. Each agent is rendered with its, its past trajectory and also its current and next simulated state. So on the WSAC leaderboard, the main metric is a realism meta metric. The MVTE is a, an enhanced version of MVTA with three model variants. On the leaderboard, our MVTE reached the highest realism score and outperforms all the other methods. Next, I want to show you some qualitative results produced by our multiverse transformer. The first run shows a vehicle waiting to get onto the main road. The car either turns left or right or keeps waiting. The ADV itself also demonstrates multimodal behavior in the sense that it either drives straight or makes a left turn. In the next example, vehicles stop at the intersections ready to make an unprotected left turn and uh, it waits for the oncoming traffic to clear. In this simulation, the ADV makes a very slow right turn, forcing the agent behind it to slow down or stop. This simulation shows a congested right lane blocked by a large truck and a, a free-flowing left lane. The car trapped behind the ADV attempts to switch lane, overtakes the ADV and the remaining slow traffic. In this scenario, the left simulation shows an ADV that slows down to allow a car merging onto the main road from my driveway. The car behind the ADV overtakes it. In the right simulation, the ADV drives straight instead of waiting for the other agents on the driveway. To wrap up our presentation, we presented a, a transformer-based generative model for closed-loop traffic agents simulation. We propose novel training, sampling, and inference strategies to promote a high degree of realism and diversity. We reached the first place on the WOSAC 2023. As for future works, we plan to further investigate the collision avoidance loss, and uh, we plan to explore the possibility of employing the scene-centric and diffusion-based simulation approaches. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, so this is the leaderboard that we have for the uh, challenge. So I'm happy to announce the winner. Uh, that was MVT that just gave the presentation. Um, we have um, the second place for MTR++, um, the third place for CAD, uh, and there's an honorable mention for uh, joint multipath. Um, so this should conclude everything. All right, uh, thanks, Nico. Uh, this is Alex, and I'll be talking about our 2D video panoptic segmentation challenge.
Uh, as a side note, we do know that we're a little bit over time, so we will push the break, uh, which will now end at 510. Um, so, okay, this is the last challenge that we will be talking about today. Uh, this is based on our video panoptic segmentation data set that we announced at CBPR last year. So for some background, the task of panoptic segmentation is one where users are asked to predict the semantic and instance label for every single pixel in the scene. However, because of the large scale of our data set and the number of ground truth labels that we have, we're able to utilize the 2D and 3D tracked uh, bounding boxes in order to be able to get us tracked instance IDs across all of the temporal sequences and also between the five cameras that we have available. Uh, this gives us a very large amount of fully tracked panoptic labels uh, across a large portion of our perception data set. We also introduced a new metric to take care of this kind of tracking across cameras uh, based on the segmentation and tracking quality data set, uh, metric for video panoptic segmentation, which we call weighted segmentation tracking quality. Uh, for information about the data set and the new task, you can visit our paper uh, link on here, or you can Google uh, panoramic video panoptic segmentation. So as a high level overview, we have labels for around 10% of our data set, or roughly uh, a little under 100,000 labels. Uh, this is broken up into around two to 2,800 sequences, uh, where we have the IDs tracked across the video in each sequence. Uh, like I said, this is across all the cameras that we have available, and we provide eight unique instance classes, uh, which will be unique in every sequence. And in addition, we provide 28 semantic classes for your standard semantic segmentation. So here we have a small sample of the kind of diversity and scale of the scenes that we have available. Uh, we have a lot of different scenes, number of instances, uh, a lot of diversity for people to work on. Since we released dataset last year, uh, we've also taken steps to try to improve it for our users. One thing that we initially noticed was that we had labelers label individual frames for uh, semantic segmentation. But the issue here was that there are a lot of regions that are kind of ambiguous between different labelers, and then we'd receive kind of uh, inconsistencies over time. So we put a lot of effort into having a third set of labelers come in and resolve a lot of these consistencies for us. So hopefully this will improve the experience for our users moving forward. In addition, for this challenge, uh, we've, received, we've released a new test set uh, with an additional 20,000 labels. This is a held out test set, so only available through our test server. Uh, but users can still submit to this and evaluate the methods on both WSDQ and MIOU for semantic segmentation. Moving forward, one thing we also noticed was that having a easy to use out of the box baseline is really important for users. So we're gonna tightly integrate with the Deep Lab 2 library so that users will be able to just download the data set and train a model right away. So moving forward, uh, we have two winners for this challenge last year. Um, coming in second, we have Clip KMAX with video stitching. And then in first place, uh, we have AMAPNet and the participants couldn't be here today, but we'll play a video for their presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Wu Xiang, and it is a great honor to be speaking at the CVPR Autonomous Driving Workshop today. I will be presenting our approach to 2D video panoptic segmentation and tracking for the Waymo Open Data Set 2023, and I hope you find it informative. To begin, I'd like to briefly introduce our task. Our goal was to develop a panoptic segmentation and tracking approach for street scenes that included many objects, long video tracking, and tracking across cameras with different views. We found this particularly, cha this particularly challenging. Our approach, called Mask to Formal VPS, has three main contributions to address the challenges we encountered. Firstly, we set each staff class as a special instance, which allowed us to transform video instance segmentation into video panoptic segmentation. This was accomplished by sharing one instance ID across all frames for the same staff class. We found that splitting cameras into different sequences and randomly sampling clips during training helped our VPS model, such as mask mask to formal. Secondly, for long video tracking, 
we used an offline method. We made clipwise prediction in the temporal dimension and then merged these clips by computing IOU matching pairs. This allowed us to achieve good results without considering tracking across cameras. Finally, we did tracking across cameras using a stitching method. We found that there was about 20% overlap between neighbor cameras, so we remapped IDs by computing IOU matching pairs. This enabled us to successfully track the same cars in different cameras, as shown in the red circles in the figure. By implementing these methods, we achieved the highest score in the leaderboard. We also developed another model called Masked Formal IOU, which takes input of a single frame instead of a clip and tracks using IOU. Masked Formal VPS demonstrated strong performance on local tracking. Even when the object was small, mostly behind another object, and the eagle vehicle was turning sharply, as shown in the first row of the red figure. As a contrast, masked formal IOU performs badly in hard cases. However, we also found that masked formal VPS tend to, tend to predict neighbor instances as one instance, as shown in Fig 3. We believe this issue may be caused by the CD 3D frame. As during training, we taught the model to predict multiple neighbor instances as one in the temporal dimension, but it generalizes the, this ability to the spatial dimension as well. One solution may be to adjust the loss function to reward temporal dimension recall while punishing spatial dimension low precision. We believe that masked formal VPS has a high chance of achieving much better performance and we hope our work can be helpful to researchers in the field of autonomous driving. Finally, we want to thank Wemo for providing such a high-quality dataset. Thank you for your attention. All right, uh, so thanks, Zhang, for the great presentation. That concludes the open dataset results. There we go. Okay, uh, so if you didn't get a chance before, we do have a survey uh, on the open dataset where your result, your responses will help us greatly in designing future challenges. If you're interested in Waymo or the challenges, we also have a booth uh, in the upcoming week where you can come and talk to researchers and engineers from Waymo. And like I mentioned before, we're a little bit over time, so we're going to come back at 5.10 after a coffee break. <laughs>